the uh, authorities in the United States. It's the American Bar Association in South Africa. It's the Council of Higher Education. I don't know what the other uh, accrediting authorities are. But we have to, warts and all, say what it is that we do. And it's really a wonderful process because it involves everybody in writing this report. And in most schools, you have a committee doing various parts of the reports. Um, but the process forces us to do the second thing and reconsider. <coughs> and it's not just reconsidering what we do in the building or in our, our jurisdiction, but it really forces us to take a more global look, to look outside and sort of reconsider what it is that we do. And this morning in this morning's panel raised some of these questions. What do we do when we could reconsider? In our self-assessment report, we also have to do a self-improvement report. So we have to ask the question, why do we do what we do, law schools? How do we do what we do, which has to do with our teaching, our pedagogy, and so on? Who is doing the doing in the building? In other words, who are the faculty? How is the faculty made up? How are the faculty appointed, and so on? And then what are our goals with respect to the students in the building? And what are our goals with respect to the wider constituencies, societies, and so on? So the why, how, who, what is very, very important in the report. So what are we we're talking about faculty? So for example, in a typical uh, self-assessment report, and Joan is going to talk a little bit about, talk about what it is when the team is actually in the building, in the self-assessment report, we would like to know how our faculty is appointed, but also how faculty are supported, tenure, conditions of employment, teaching load, diversity in the United States, racial diversity, gender diversity, and so on, which are very important issues, uh, etc. So those are, are, are the, 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 the faculty important. We also look at the qualifications of faculty. So uh, schools are very, the, when the, the self-assessment report, schools, you really look at the talent, at the talent in law schools you know, across the board is, is, is very impressive. And I think for deans, to be able to showcase the work of faculty is very important in this process. We look at students, and particularly, we look at how students are recruited. Again, what kind of support is given to students, either to come to law school, and what kind of uh, support we give inside to ensure that we have a good throughput rate, and so on. What kind of academic support is in the building? Uh, 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 those kinds of things. We look at assessment, evaluations, to, to look at the way that all the courses really take account of the goals, the outputs, versus uh, uh, what this, what's happening and whether there's quality control across the board. Um, a very, very important part of the self-assessment report is this question of institutional culture and the cultural context. So the institutional culture has a lot to do with how the relationship of the law school to the wider university, to the profession, and so on. But the cultural context is really about the rule of law, and it's about justice and those kinds of animating issues that I think the IALS is uh, uh, dedicated to. A very, very important point, um, and Louis raised this this morning for the Global South. I think this is an important question when we're thinking about accreditation, and that is the issue of facilities. The, th the third point, resources. What are your facilities like? What is the library like? Now that things are online, the whole question of facilities is somewhat different. We used to, in the old days, go to visit libraries and look at the volumes and the books that they have on the shelves. Now that things are online, it's a very, very different approach, but the, really the question is, what kind of facilities, and particularly library resources, are being dedicated to the learning and teaching as well as research uh, issues. Facilities, all kinds of facilities for students and teachers. So there's a wide range of issues that an accreditation body would be concerned with. And for us, certainly IALS, I think that the idea is, is really it's kind of, the, as, as Mary Kay said, it's supportive it's sharing knowledge, it's looking at expertise that we all can share. 
So the final point I'm just going to talk about a little bit um, is about the question of renewal. But before before I, I, I do my final uh, uh, power uh, a slide, I think that uh, George <coughs> Williams, the point he raised couldn't be emphasized more. This idea of technology, of artificial intelligence, robotics, law, law faculties, universities are going to change so dramatically and rapidly in the next few years. And I, certainly sitting at the University of Cape Town, it's not panic, but I'm sort of, I'm panic because there's such a sense of complacency. And the idea that in 10 years, what 2,000 lawyers could do can now be done by 10 lawyers and a couple of robots and, and, and machines is a frightening thing. And I think every lawyer, every law school should really, really be engaged in looking at this for the purposes of renewal. So my final slide. Um, no, no, sorry. When I, we wrote our self-improvement report at the University of Cape Town for the Council of Higher Education, but I also brought some of my knowledge, as, as I said, I was a prior dean um, in New York. So what is a, the question is, is, what does the law school of the future look like? Now, somebody said this morning that there will be no more law schools in the future. I'm an optimist. So I think there will be a law school of the future, maybe for the next 50 years, 20 to 50 years. And so these are the, the kinds of things that I think the, the law school of the future, and it came up in our self-assessment report, as well as our self-improvement report. The first is, obviously, the law school that's committed to excellence, equity, ethics, and diversity. And yeah, diversity, obviously I'm using it very, very broadly. In the South African context, diversity is about race, is about gender, and so on. <coughs> Um, engage research and scholarship. This question of decolonization now is we are in South Africa really, really caught in the throes of this moment of decolonization. And it really is about the kind of research that we do and so on. Excellent and innovative pedagogy, and that has to do with technology. Institutionalized mentoring and advising. This is something that is so self-evident, but as I, maybe it's a function of age, but the longer that I've been a law professor, I've realized that students more and more need the kind of mentoring that's very purposive and very interventionist in ways that I've not seen before. It may just be a global south issue, but I think it's important. Um, interdisciplinarity and collaboration. Again, this was mentioned this morning about collaborating with uh, finance, technology, joint degree programs, moving away from the old joint degree programs, the ones that, so, so instead of sort of law MBA, maybe law science and uh, law engineering. And then partnerships and revenue generation, we can't get away from that. As states withdraw funds, as more and more private universities come to the fore, and so on. And then the final thing is engaged alumni. So that's the sort of process of renewal that I think. So revisiting, reconsidering resources and renewal is really part of the uh, uh, accreditation visit. And I think that uh, for us in this organization, individually and collectively, we will really benefit from it. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, I'd like to begin by just uh, telling everyone how honored I am to be with such a distinguished group and welcoming group and just basically very nice <laughs> group of um, academics in the law from around the world. This is a real humbling experience for me, so thank you so much. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our host institution the, and the, all the faculty and staff who have made this such a wonderful experience for all of us. And um, I really like Indian food, so I'm really happy to be here. And I also, of course, want to thank Frank and Barbara for their leadership in pulling this together. It's a wonderful experience for me, and I know it is for everyone else in the room. So thank you very much. Well, following the remarks that have been made up to this point, what I'm going to focus on is what happens when the site team, and we've talked about the four people who are going to be coming to visit at law school, actually show up. What happens? But I want to step back just a moment to say, first of all, to say one thing. As, as Penny said, no one's looking for a cookie, and I think Mary Kay said this um, also. When you talk about certification, it's not necessarily a, a looking at a cookie cutter approach to legal education. It's looking at setting some standards and some basics that every law school should aspire to and accomplish, and maybe how to measure what you're doing. But certainly, every law school is not going to look the same. They're going to have different goals, different ambitions, different missions. So no one's going to be trying to put everything in a box. And I think it's really important to remember. 
Um, but I also want to talk a little bit about what happens before the team actually shows up. And first of all, probably the chair of the team, a team is usually is probably going to be about four people, will be appointed. And that's probably somebody who's going to be experienced in accreditation and a, a pretty senior legal educator. And that person will probably call the dean of the school and they'll figure out what, what is a good date. Because you don't want this team to show up the first week of school. You don't want them to show up during the finals. I mean, you know, usually about three or four weeks into the semester is a good time. But also, I think that initial conversation is a good time for the chair of the team and the dean of the school to develop a relationship. So that the dean can also say, I especially would like you to look at how we're using technology in the classroom. Or I especially would like you to look at our skills training program. So you'll, there'll be what's, what's really important to the school. And also, I think that's a way that the dean can sensitize the psych team chair to what the culture of the school is and what they might need to be sensitive to. So once that's established, though, the team, the chair of the team will also, there's probably going to be three other people, and one person will probably be assigned to skills training. They're all, everyone on the team's not going to be looking at everything. One person's going to be looking at skills training, probably. One person's going to be probably looking at the doctrinal curriculum. One person might be looking at resources, as Penny mentioned. Does the, uh, is there enough technology in the classroom so they can really be innovative in their teaching? So everyone will have kind of their different roles. And then when they actually show up, and this is a schedule that's going to be worked out in great detail. I, I've chaired a lot of teams. I've been in, we've been in, we, we try to use the word evaluated in the United States, but in the United States, an accreditation visit also is referred to as an inspection. Um, it's, a very, it's, a, it's a very precise schedule that's worked out long in advance. Uh, we just had our inspection. I felt like I was planning a wedding. You know, we're going to do this, 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 and this. But um, so there will be a schedule that will be worked out before the team gets there. And usually what happens, the team will show up on, I'm going to hypothetically say, a Sunday. Not at the school, just in the, in the town. And about 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, the team will come over to the law school and get a tour. It will not, have, it's not of the whole facility, but just of, you know, here's, here's the classrooms, here's where the dean's office is, uh, here's where the clinic is, here's where the library, just a pretty brief tour. Also, what you'll need to do, and I won't go into too much detail about it, there will be need to be one room that's called the team room. So a place where the team can always kind of escape to and work to during the, the site visit. And then there will be a welcoming dinner. And I always look at site visits are really the most successful ones are the ones where there's a good relationship has been created. And so there, it really is a dinner, it's more of a welcome dinner, where the dean of the law school can welcome the team, the chair of the team can talk about how thankful they are to be there. And then what you'll have is a few, a few senior administrators, like you probably will have your head of your curriculum committee if you have one there. You'll have your, maybe your vice dean who actually um, maybe works out the curriculum. You might have your skills training faculty member there. If you have somebody that knows a lot about technology as a faculty member, they might be there. Not a cast of thousands, but a group of people and you'll have a nice dinner. And then the next day, the team will hit the, hit the ground running. And I guess the one thing I forgot to mention, you need to make sure your students and your faculty know this team is showing up. Or they'll be wondering who these people are who are wandering all over the building. But they will show up on Monday morning and they will have meetings scheduled and meet with uh, you know, your head of curriculum, they'll meet with your admissions office probably, they'll meet with your librarian probably, your tech people, your, um, they'll probably have many conversations with the dean, but they'll have meetings set up throughout the visit. And then also usually on the first day around noon, um, there, will be a, there could be a luncheon with all the faculty so that they can meet all the faculty together and it, it'd be something like this. They just sit down and with many tables and there'll be a site visitor at every table. And it, once again, it's a relationship building episode, uh, experience as many as anything else. But also the team learns things from those lunches. And then but throughout the day also, the team is going to be visiting classrooms to see how you're delivering your program of legal education. And it's not just, is the faculty member a good instructor? Are the students engaged? Are they paying attention? You know, usually when I do a site visit, I sit in the back of the room to, make, to, to watch the kids check their email, basically, which <laughs> happens at my law school, too. But um, in fact, one of my research assistants just bought a car during class, but I wasn't <laughs> supposed to know about that. But anyway, um, you know, to see how, how engaged the students are, how they're using technology. So that's part of it. Also, every site visit, it, visit team member will visit as many faculty members one-on-one -on -one in their offices for about, and they usually will have a sheet so everybody's asking the same question, but 
Well, how, what support are you getting for teaching? What do you support? How do you feel the innovation, innovations are uh, rolling out in your law school? So they'll develop, they'll hear from, from the faculty themselves what they think about what's going on. But a very important part of this is all of legal education, as we know, and it's really hard for a faculty member to say it, but it is student-centered. Um, I always kind of think it's faculty-centered, but it is student-centered, is that they'll be meeting with students and talking to students. They'll want to talk to your student leaders, but they'll also want to just randomly stop students in the hall and say, well, you know, how, how do you look at your instruction here? You know, how's it going? Is it, uh, are your faculty members using technology a lot? And usually school, law students love their law schools, and they're very supportive. But, you know, it's very important that they get that information, too. Um, and so that's pretty much what goes on for the first two days. Um, and they might have a student a lunch with some of your student leaders. It's, it's up to you if you uh, want to schedule that or not. And then another thing that's up to you, which a lot of schools find very useful, is to have some sort of meeting with alumni. Because the alumni are the consumers of your, of your product, who, who your students are graduating, and ask them, um, how are the students that are coming out? Or also talking to recent graduates and saying, um, how was the program of education? Did it, did it prepare you to be a practice-ready lawyer? And so there'll be that experience also. And then usually, so you've been there for that dinner on Sunday night, two more days, and then usually it, the last day is just a half day. And most of it is to just have what we call an exit interview. You sit down with the dean, it'll be up to the dean if you'd like to bring in the, or she would like to bring in the vice dean or some other people, and you just talk about what you learned. And um, I always look at, in fact, many people refer to it, the nice thing about a site visit, it's like having four free consultants. Because they will sit there and they, you know, they'll answer your questions, they'll give you some guidance, they'll say, you know, you might want to think about doing this. Uh, we saw this, it's a great, it's really, the students loved it. And maybe you've never heard that the students loved it. But it's just a way for them to kind of report back to you what they learned. And then as Mary Kay mentioned, you will get a written report. But um, I think the one thing to be thinking about is I think um, some people think that the site visit process can be very intimidating or even a hostile experience, and it's not that way at all. It's really a very supportive um, experience if it's done right, and you learn a lot, and as Penny said, you take that information and you use it to improve what already are your excellent law schools. You just take them to the next step. Hello and good afternoon. I'd like to uh, echo the uh, comments of my fellow panelists to say what a wonderful time I'm having here and to thank you all for having me. Um, I also um, want to uh, echo Joan and say that I am uh, extremely humbled to be here. I suspect I'm much, much more humbled than she is um, because I have no experience whatsoever uh, about accreditation, certification, or evaluation. I come from Singapore, and in Singapore, um, for law faculties or law schools, birth and certification come together, and they're both done by the governmental midwife. You know, um, you know, if, if if they allow you to be set out, you're certified. Um, so I I really know nothing, um, but perhaps um, that will allow me to ask some. Uh, newbie questions and make some observations um, that might uh, help to uh, uh, inform some of the discussion that comes. Uh, the other thing I will say is that I'm, I'm, I'm very gratified to, to be here because it's not often uh, that your dean is your opening act. Uh, <laughs> although perhaps uh, it'd be more accurate to say that I'm sort of a last minute um, substitution and there's a strong possibility that I will do their own goal and uh, lose the game for everyone right at the end. But, um, uh, you know, when Simon says, so I, I wasn't even sure that I would be here. I didn't know I would be here till about two weeks ago. Um, and um, I did not have the privilege of sort of being privy to some of the obvious um, uh, care and detail that has gone into the presentations of my fellow uh, journalists. Everything they said today was a total revelation to me as um, uh, I was hearing it for the first time. Um, but again, I think perhaps that puts me into a good position to just um, ask some questions uh, and make some observations. So um, I'm, I'm uh, you know, having no uh, originality at all. I'm, I'm just going to copy um, Penny's questions um, and then drop a few because I'm, I'm not able to ask all of them. So I think at some point she asked sort of why, how, who, and what. 
Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll copy some of that. I'll copy who, the what, and the why. Um, with apologies to Penny and perhaps to Dion Warwick. Um, so who? Um, uh, it seems to me that one, one big question um, that perhaps as we discuss later on, we might want to uh, engage with <coughs> is um, uh, to, to think through a little bit more whether we want to specify um, certain requirements for the team. Now, I, I, I mean, I've heard um, from my colleagues who are much more experienced at this that you know the team will comprise about four persons and there will be legal educators, etc. Um, and I note that the Madrid Protocol rightly enjoins that the standard of any evaluative process must be jurisdictionally and institutionally specific, while at the same time informed by evolving and international evaluative pra practices. And I, I wonder how, if at all, the composition of the team should reflect these principles. I mean, we have the idea of international experts, but how do we honor the injunction that the process also be jurisdictionally and institutionally specific? Um, you know, do we, should we require that there also be a domestic expert of some sort on every team? Because how do we, how do we guard against, and do we need to guard, guard against perhaps an unconscious bias towards imposition of prescription from some international perspective or gaze? And I think this is a different um, there, there are different values at stake uh, from when you're assembling a team, say, within the U.S., to go around the U.S. And, 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 and look at the schools there versus when you're assembling a team in order to do, um, uh, you know, to engage in a project of this sort. So that's, that's the first question I'll throw out there. Um, you know, how, how, do we, how do we reflect the domestic part of the expertise um, in, in the team? Uh, and it seems to me also that geographical diversity may not be uh, enough. And of course, I heard Joan uh, uh, talk about how the team should involve someone who's going to look at curriculum, or someone who might be a pedagogy type person. Um, but um, I ask myself whether uh, we need to look even further than that. I mean, um, we hear some of what was happening and uh, talked about in the morning about um, the change that's going to come, um, uh, technology. Uh, do, do we need to specify somehow in this team uh, perhaps representatives from stakeholders other than legal educationists? Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar with how these things are done, but um, does it make sense to have um, a representative who's from practice? Uh, does it make sense to have a representative, I don't know, who's a student? Um,